بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brothers and sisters may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and guide you and keep you on the right path today we're going to be talking about khamar khamar means wine but in reality the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in the hadith was collected by muslim in his sahih every intoxicant is khamar and every type of khamar is haram so everything that intoxicates you is considered to be khamar and so whatever allah and his messenger have said either in the quran of course or on the tongue of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam applies to all intoxicants whether that is uh, hashish marijuana lsd cocaine heroin ecstasy whatever it may be these all of these things are considered to be khamar they are all intoxicants and that doesn't matter whether it's wine or spirits or beer anything that intoxicates you comes under the definition of khamar and as we know in the early days of islam the arabs were hugely addicted to wine in fact they were so fond of wine they were probably even more fond of wine than the french and the french are very fond of wine and they even used to have poetries poems about wine in fact most of their poems were about either wine or war or women but subhanallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to them a messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to them and indeed not only to them but to all of us to all of mankind his guidance the guidance from the knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through that guidance they were able to leave drinking wine indeed when the verses came down prohibiting wine they opened the caskets of wine and spilt them in the streets those people who had glasses of wine to their lips spilt it on the floor in fact they said that the streets of medina were rivers of wine for that day as people destroyed themselves no authority no police no one you see what we were talking about before the internal police force the taqwa how islam is training everybody to be primarily responsible over themselves through the consciousness of god through being mindful of allah so this is what they did and all because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had prohibited it now in the early days the wine was not actually prohibited but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was already revealing verses that was giving to those people a hint the clue that being intoxicated is not something that they should do the reason for that the primary reason is because being intoxicated is something that confuses the mind it destroys the mind and it does not allow us to think properly and so preserving our mind is of the utmost importance there are many other reasons which inshallah we will talk about some of those reasons later but right now let's get back to this verse where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first of all he told them that they are not allowed to approach prayer while they were intoxicated so the first verses of the quran were about prohibiting praying while they were intoxicated now of course muslims pray five times a day so it's pretty difficult to find a time to drink a lot of alcohol if you're praying five times a day so if you think about that already allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by prohibiting them from being drunk while they were praying was already making it difficult for them to and already preparing them to give up the alcohol allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already then said that in alcohol there is some good but there is also much evil and the evil is more than the good maybe there's a benefit in one man finding happiness with another man and they live a nice happy life and they love each other and this and that well okay maybe there is some benefit but we would say that the harm of that on the individual and there is a physical harm in that in the individual as well as the potential harm for the society outweighs any benefit this will be the same with all of these things that we are mentioning so yes alcohol may have some benefit but in reality the harm is much much more than the benefit finally allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he revealed oh you who believe khamar and arrow shuffling 
idols and divining arrows are only an abomination from the works of shaitan. Therefore, leave it so that you may be successful. Shaitan only desires to arouse hatred and enmity among you with khamar and arrow shuffling and to keep you from the remembrance of Allah and from prayer. Therefore, will you not leave it off? That is not really Allah saying, you know, why don't you... No, it's meaning in Arabic, it's a very emphatic way of saying, leave it. Don't do that. And so what are the harmful effects? Of course, shaitan, the devil, wants us to forget Allah. He wants us to be far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants us to leave off prayer. And this is one of the effects of being intoxicated. One of the effects of being intoxicated is that it produces within you a superficial and artificial feeling of happiness, of escaping, I suppose, in many ways, if you look at most drugs, most intoxicants, they are a form of escapism. They are a means through which and by which a person escapes from the realities of life. And sometimes the human being may imagine that that is beneficial for them, but in reality it is not beneficial for them. The real way to deal with life is to understand life properly. And you understand life properly when you know that you have a Lord who is your creator, who you should worship. And when you live your life as a Muslim, you will find peace, you will find happiness, you will find tranquility, and you will not need, inshallah, if you live that life properly, you will not need to be intoxicated. You will not need to find an escape because you only need that escape because you don't understand. You are ignorant. You don't understand what life is about. You are confused. You are depressed. You don't know how to deal with problems, but Islam teaches you what are the reasons, how to deal with the problems, that we should take refuge with Allah and obedience to Him, and that in reality, we are the cause for our own problems. When we obey Allah, when we follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what do we find? We find that peace and happiness and joy and tranquility comes into our life. Now I know there are Muslims. Some of you out there maybe even know people in your family who are drinking alcohol and doing many haram things. But that is not the fault of Islam. Islam clearly says these things are forbidden. And if people are not finding happiness in their life, that is because they are not obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are not following the guidance that he has sent down through his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when these verses came down, it's very clear. These verses are very, very clear in prohibiting alcohol and of course, as we have mentioned from the authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim, everything which intoxicates you is khamar. So the command is very clear to abandon everything that is intoxicating. And the Prophet ﷺ told us about khamar. He told us stay away from khamar because it is the mother of evil. The Prophet ﷺ called it the mother of evils. Why? Because when you are drunk, it is so easy for you to commit many other crimes. When you are drunk, it is easy for you to commit fornication. It's easy for you to commit adultery. Part of the effect of alcohol is it makes you shameless. You will fight other human beings. You may even kill a person. And it happens, not maybe, it does happen. And it happens frequently. The things that human beings normally feel very shy, they feel really constrained from doing those things. And it's in their nature when they drink alcohol they lose their inhibitions. They lose those things that prevent them from doing those crimes and it becomes very easy for them to do all sorts of forbidden things. And that is why it is called the mother of evils. And we only need to look at the statistics in those countries where alcohol is easily available to see the crime that is linked to alcohol. In fact, something like 60 to 70 percent of all crime in the United Kingdom, for example, is linked to alcohol. Maybe from 60 to 70, even more, is linked to alcohol. We're talking about murder. We're talking about violent assault. We're talking about robbery. So much of the robbery and theft 
is linked with drug abuse and substance abuse. People who are addicted to drugs, stealing even sometimes from their own family, their own parents. Look at the crime that results from taking and being involved in intoxicants, whatever they are. So brothers and sisters, you can see that this is a really terrible thing. It is really a truly corrupting thing. It corrupts the individual, it corrupts the society. It is bad for the individual, it is bad for society. So alcohol, intoxicants, drugs, their effect is widespread, not only on an individual level, but a social level. No wonder Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this forbidden. And it is incredible to think that any civilized society actually allows alcohol to be processed, to be sold, to be made, to be drunk, to be taken. There's no difference between alcohol and drugs. In fact, interestingly enough, recently there is a whole controversy in the West about marijuana. And one of the experts there has been saying that actually alcohol is much more dangerous or at least as dangerous as that. This is, they actually sometimes using it as a reason to legalize marijuana. In fact, that's ridiculous. Alcohol should be banned as well as marijuana. All of them should be forbidden. No one should have easy access to what ultimately is death and destruction and corruption of themselves and of society. My dear brothers and sisters, we should understand very clearly that not only wine and spirits and beer, but anything which intoxicates has been prohibited by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us that whoever drinks khamar in this world, it would be prohibited for him in the hereafter. And both Bukhari and Muslim collected it. Meaning a person who becomes, who drinks khamar, who drinks wine in this world, he is going to be prohibited from the wine in paradise. And by the way, the wine in paradise is not like the wine of this world. The wine of this world and the khamar and the intoxicants of this world, they confuse you. When you drink alcohol and you drink a lot of it, it makes you ill, it makes you sick. You wake up in the next morning with a hangover and so on and so forth. It makes you behave in a stupid way. The wine of paradise is not like that as it clearly is stated in the Quran. It is not a wine that intoxicates you at all. In fact, it is a wine that only brings you closer and makes you more uh, loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is a, a totally unlike the wine of this life. But it is truly, of course, the wine of paradise is truly delightful with no side effects and no negative effects. Whereas the wine of this life is not like that at all. Indeed, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he also mentioned Allah has prohibited Jannah to three types of people. The one addicted to khamar, the one who is disrespectful to his parents, and the cuckold, is that is the person. The cuckold, by the way, the youth, is the person who does not care, who visits his wife, who has intercourse with his wife, who looks at his wife. And that is something we should have mentioned in the previous lectures, actually concerning fornication and adultery. A man should have honor, he should have self-respect, he should have dignity, he should hate that another person looks at his wife or commits any type of uh, lewd act with his wife. That is part of the, there is no good in a man who does not have honor like that. He's not a man, really. You can only describe him as a male. He's not a man. So, brothers and sisters, uh, that is also going back to, of course, the issue of khamar. Also, one of the terrible effects of khamar is that the salah, the prayer of a person who drinks uh, khamar will not be accepted for 40 days. In fact, that's how long it takes for the substance to pass through your body. So whoever takes khamar, their prayer will not be accepted for 40 days. However, it is still obligatory for the person to pray. There are two important things here. Number one, the obligation of praying. And number two, the blessing of praying. So the person who leaves the obligation of prayer, we've already talked about that. That person according to many scholars, leaves Islam, becomes like a person who is not Muslim at all. So if a person drinks khamar, their prayer will not be accepted, meaning they will not get the blessing and the benefit of the prayer, but they must perform the obligation, even if they drunk alcohol. So that is one of the 
spiritually negative effects of drinking khamar, of being intoxicated, any type of intoxication doesn't mean only wine, of taking any type of intoxication, as we said, all of these things that where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the prohibition of khamar is also to all those other types of intoxication, whether it's LSD or heroin or marijuana or hashish or you know, whatever, you know, ecstasy or whatever other things people in uh, concocting and taking up these days, may Allah protect us from that. Okay, also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the person, when they take khamar, when they take intoxicant, they are not a believer. We mentioned that similarly concerning the adulterer and the fornicator. Their iman leaves them, their iman hovers above their head. It's like a shirt that's lifted off them. This is also the case for the one who drinks khamar. When the person who drinks wine, their faith leaves them while they are in that state, in that condition. Now also, my dear brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you and guide you and keep you away from these terrible afflictions like the drinking of alcohol. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not only prohibit the drinking of alcohol. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam also prohibited us from those things that are going to lead us towards that. That is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, truly Allah has cursed khamar. Truly Allah has cursed khamar. He cursed the one who produces it. Ten people are cursed concerning khamar. Ten, that's ten there. Ten people are cursed concerning khamar. Number one, the one who produces it. The one for whom it is produced. The one who drinks it. The one who serves it. The one who carries it. The one for whom it is carried. The one who sells it. The one who earns money from the sale of it the one who buys it, and the one for whom it is bought. This makes it absolutely clear that it is haram for anyone to sell khamar. There are many Muslims selling alcohol. Your money is haram, and we're going to be talking about earning haram money. And what is the consequence of earning haram money? And very briefly, my brothers and sisters, if your money is haram, your food is haram, your clothing that you buy from it is haram, your drink that you drink from it is haram, your charity that you give from it is only going to sink you further down into the hellfire. No Muslim should have any business earning their money from that which is haram. If it is, that money will only bring you misery in your life and the life of your family. Selling alcohol earns the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. It is very sad to see that there are Muslims who sell khamar. Truly those people are cursed. And some of them are even more cursed because they add to that an evil saying is that we are only selling alcohol to non-Muslims. It doesn't matter. No. Every Muslim should be concerned about the well-being of every other human being. The fact that you are selling alcohol to a non-Muslim does not make it halal. It is not permissible for you to deal in anything that is haram, even if you are selling it to a non-Muslim. And also, the effect of alcohol is upon the whole society. How is it you live in a society and you sell alcohol? How do you know it will not be your sister, your mother, your brother, your own children who will not suffer from a car accident of a drunk or from the murder of a drunk or from any other evil that takes place as a consequence of people drinking alcohol? How is it as a Muslim you live in a society and you are not concerned with contributing to the well-being of that society? How is that compatible with Iman? when it is a duty and obligation upon every Muslim to enjoy what is right and to forbid what is wrong. No, so a Muslim, you can't produce it, you can't sell it, you can't carry it, you can't serve it, you can't buy it. Even in another tradition, the Prophet ﷺ said, a believer does not sit on the same tablecloth where alcohol is being served. You shouldn't sit on the same table where there is alcohol. 
So my brothers and sisters, that is some of the admonitions in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that also there are things that you should not even visit a person who is sick who is drinking alcohol, even not praying the funeral prayer of a person who died drinking alcohol. It is not permissible also to take alcohol as a medicine as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is no medicine for my ummah in something which is haram. And there are specific punishments in the hellfire. The one who drinks khamr in this world, Allah will give the venom of snakes to drink. The venom will be so potent that the flesh of his face will fall off into the pot before he drinks it. And after drinking it, his flesh and skin will rot to the annoyance of the inhabitants of the fire. His sin of drinking will be shared by the one who produces it, the one for whom it is produced, the one who carries it, the one for whom it is carried, and the one who earns from the sale of it. And Allah didn't mention anything about whether it's to a Muslim or a non-Muslim. Allah will not accept from them their prayer, their fasting, their hajj, unless they repent. And if they die before repentance, it becomes incumbent upon Allah to give them a drink from hell's molten brass, and for each sip of wine they took from this life. Brothers and sisters, that is some of the things I wanted to read very briefly, some of the medical disadvantages of drinking alcohol. Long-term effects of alcohol abuse. In excessive qualities it's capable of damaging nearly every single organ and system in the body. Regularly consuming alcohol is correlated with an increase in developing alcoholism, cardiovascular disease, malabsorbent, chronic pancreatitis, alcohol, liver disease, and cancer. Damage to the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system can occur from sustained alcohol consumption. Researchers find that the correlation between light alcohol consumption and reduce of uh, heart disease has moderate health benefits. However, that is really disputed by many, many other doctors. It's still controversial, rather. And not everyone agrees that even small amounts of alcohol benefit you. In fact, there's a dispute about the research done. The reality is that whatever small positive effects there may be are far, far outdone by the negative effects, not only on the individual's health, but indeed on the whole society in terms of the crime, the destruction, the confusion, the pain, the suffering, the misery that is all caused by consumption of alcohol. Brothers and sisters, fear Allah, repent to Allah, ask for his forgiveness and give up all these evil things that you may be indulging in. May Allah guide you and me closer to the truth. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.